so that this fear of freedom, right, will prevent me from wanting to go outside the box, right? And hence, I, I guess the, the, the idea of thinking outside the box is sort of this, it, it has its roots in a sense in this, right? Don't be confined by your situation of, of oppression. Allow what you have inside that you don't think is viable, that you don't think is important, to be externalized in the world. Have your ideas manifest as reality, right? And that reality will liberate you from your confines. However, what we have to recognize is that for, uh, um, keep one in the Sega set, for for year, um, for for year, this, this, this system, this situation of oppression uh, imposes a fear of freedom, and that imposition on fear of freedom keeps us within the box, right? That's what that point means, right? So the conformity of unfreedom is what I just described, right? It is the attempt to stay within the confines because I'm comfortable with my surroundings rather than recognizing that I need to, um, I need to forcefully free myself from my uh, situation of oppression. Okay, um, the next is the duality of the oppressed, right? The, the duality of the, the duality of the oppressed. Um, freedom is necessary for authentic existence, right? It's pretty, it's pretty basic, right? In order for me to talk about authentically existing, the only way that I can authentically exist is outside of the box. Right? That box being a situation of oppression. If I'm inside of the box, if I'm within a situation of oppression, I cannot properly be said to be free. The only way that I can be free is to, one, recognize my situation of oppression, two, struggle to free myself from that situation of oppression, and hence be liberated. In attaining my liberation, I attain my authenticity. Um, Authent authentic existence requires struggle, right? So now we're starting to set up, we can see that there's a syllogism uh, growing in. And I want to write the syllogism out so that you see it, right? So we can start like this. If, if freedom, if freedom is uh, necessary for, and I'll just put AE for authentic existence, if freedom is necessary for authentic existence, right? And if we say authentic existence, um, authentic existence requires struggle, right? If freedom, liberation, is necessary for authentic existence, and authentic existence requires struggle, to get here requires struggle, right? If it requires struggle, um, and it's the case that the oppressed, right? The oppressed are fearful, right? They have this fear. Where's the fear? I think I erased it, but I put added on here before. And the oppressed are fearful of struggling, right? So the oppressed are fearful. And the oppressed are fearful of struggle. Right? So if freedom is necessary for authentic existence, and authentic existence requires struggle, but the oppressed are fearful of struggle then you can see the syllogism, right? If I'm fearful of struggling, if I'm fearful of struggling, right, then the conclusion is the oppressed have, obviously, a, sen a, a, a fear of freedom, right? So three dots in a triangle is therefore. Therefore, the oppressed are fearful of freedom. They have a fear of freedom, F-R-E-E, -E, right? They have a fear of freedom. And the question is, well, why do they have a fear of freedom, right? That's the question, and you should be able to uh, uh, answer that question, right? This is a um, this is a hypothetical syllogism. He constructs this. Well, he didn't actually construct this argument. I constructed it, but this is what he's saying, right? I, I constructed it so it can make sense. But the hypothetical syllogism is set up so that you make sense of this last claim, right? The oppressed are fearful of freedom, and the question is why. This is true because they are fearful of struggle. So if I need struggle to get to, to freedom, and I'm fearful of doing this, then if I don't do this, I'll never get that freedom, right? Struggle is um, a necessary, though not sufficient. This recognition is a necessary, though not sufficient condition for my uh, emancipation. Um, Freer talks about the goal, right? The goal. What is the point of this pedagogy of the oppressed? And he's specifically now talking about his intention in writing the book. 
I forget how he words it, but it's like my goal in writing this book is X, Y, Z, and I'll explain it in a little bit. Um, the goal of pedagogy, pedagogy of the press. This pedagogy must be used in concert with, not for, the oppressed, right? It's not an act of charity, right? Um, when we look at the relationship between the oppressor and the oppressed, right? S O R. When we look at the relationship between the oppressor and not the oppressed, it is not, right? He says, it is not, um, this pedagogy of the oppressed is used in concert with, right? So it's this, right? It's, it's, it's a mutual, between the oppressor and the oppressed, it's a mutual attempt at liberation, a mutual attempt at emancipation. The only caveat being is that the initiation of this act of liberation always begins with the oppressed group. Once the oppressed group recognizes their oppression and moves towards an act of liberation, it will slowly pull, rather, uh, rather forcefully, the oppressors into an act of liberation as well, right? So, um, it's not an act for the oppressed group, it's an act with, in, in concert with, the oppressed group. Um, the goal of the pedagogy of the oppressed is, the second point is, a reconciliation and reflection on opposition will um, precipitate the struggle for liberation, right? So a recognition and reflection on opposition will precipitate the struggle for liberation. Once I recognize sort of the duality of this conflict, right? The conflict of being oppressed, the conflict of having to oppress, right? The conflict that this relationship that we have is inherently um, rooted in a situation of oppression, right? Then we can understand that it's not just me that's bracketed or you that's bracketed. It's not simply the case that the oppressed group is bracketed and the oppressor is bracketed, but that we both are bracketed. We both are framed within, and this would obviously be this, right? This would be, and I should use it like a different color. This would be, um, right? this would be the situation of our oppression. The situation of oppression at its first glance is my oppression and your oppression, which are two different circumstances, right? You having to think that you have to oppress me, me having the fear of not wanting to escape my oppression, only then to realize that it's not that you're doing this for me, right? This liberation isn't for me. This liberation is with me. Both of us need to get out of this bracketing, right? This situation of our, our oppression. And that's what um, Freer is saying. Um, the central problem for his analysis, and I'll, I'll read it, and I've, I've cited it uh, in my version. I have the 30th. This version right here is the, uh, the 30th anniversary version of uh, Freer's Pedagogy of the Press. So um, for, for this analysis, um, the citations refer to, to, that, to that version. Um, he says, how can the oppressed, and this is a direct quote, right? So the central problem for his analysis is the following, to, an to answer this question. How can the oppressed, as divided, inauthentic beings, participate in developing the pedagogy of their liberation? I'll read that again, right? How can the oppressed, right? How can the oppressed? How can the oppressed, as divided, and I erased it, but, you know, sub, uh, sub, uh, oppression, right? How can the the, um, how can the oppressed, as divided, because there are some oppressors in their group, as divided, inauthentic beings, participate in developing, keyword, the development is the pedagogy, right? That word development is, is key, right? Is, it is the attempt to operationalize sort of this, this, I hate to be technical, but the attempt to operationalize the epistemological understanding of one's own situation of oppression, if that makes any sense, right? It's my awareness that I am oppressed, I understand that I'm oppressed, and insofar as I understand that I'm oppressed, I'm developing a system, a method for freeing myself from that oppression, right? That's what he means. How is it that this group can do that? Um, the only way to do it is through the process of humanization, and that's what we're going to talk about now, right? So the only way to be able to do this is through a process of humanization.